We're driving a 1965 Lotus Elan S2. The colour is Medici blue, it's just something I've learnt today. I actually thought it was a more mainstream colour, but once we looked into it, it's actually classed as Medici blue. The dash is made of a lovely teak wood. It's been restored, it's been beautifully varnished. Very functional again, like the Lancia that we tested last week. Everything's to hand, the rev count, the speed, all the warning gauges and warning lights. 1558 twin cam, independent suspension all round. Beautiful car. Belongs to a really influential owner that we do quite a lot of work for. Four speed rocket gearbox, little short quick shift on it, motor liter wheel, teak wood dash. Well, ultimately a good year, a 1965. Anything else interesting happened that year? Well, that's why it's a good year. It's the year I was born, September 1965. Well, Jim Clark not only owned a Lotus Elan, he actually drove for Lotus Formula One back in the 60s. And his favourite quote for Lotus Elans is, he didn't drive one of these because he had to, he drove one for pleasure. 1965, Jim Clark didn't turn up to do the Monaco Grand Prix because he decided, along with Colin Chapman, they wanted to go and try and win the Indy 500, which they duly did. A really good feat, a Scotchman going over to to America to their gold chip event and taking the event but also in 1965 Jim Clark won the British Grand Prix on his way to winning the Formula One World Championship and this car has got emblems on each wing disclosing that fact. Lotus as a company were famous for making lightweight cars the philosophy of Colin Chapman who owned Lotus was the fact that you gained performance by lightness so everything was made to an absolute bare minimum Lotus are about, they've had a few roller coaster rides of Lotus but they're still in Norfolk. They're now owned by the Malaysians and they're building probably record numbers at the moment. The Lotus Elise, which is the modern day equivalent of this car, has been selling in vast numbers. Well you usually find Lotus now on the club scene. Unfortunately Lotus dropped off the radar a little bit. Lotus through the 60s and 70s and just about into the early 80s were a big player in Formula One. But unfortunately, as times came on, the costs grew. Unfortunately, we lost one of my all-time heroes, Colin Chapman. It just seemed to drop off the radar. With this car, I've ultimately fallen in love with. I've got to tell you, not a lot of the time do I fall in love with cars. I love cars, but I've absolutely fallen in love with this car. Well, one of my all-time favourite cars, the Lotus Elan. Today, uh, today we're going to be doing an oil and filter change on a Jaguar E-Type. Uh, it belongs to Andy from SGL Print Media. Um, straightforward job but enjoyable to do because it's arguably one of the prettiest cars ever developed. Yeah, so first steps to drain the oil. Uh, we need to take the sump plug out and uh, make sure you hit the bucket. There is a little uh, copper washer on there that acts as a seal. It will change that anyway. How often do you need to, to make an oil change on a car like this? On a car like this I'd recommend every six months. Uh, some people will do every 12 months but obviously we tend to do it when the seasons change, when the warm weather starts and when the cold weather starts, okay. uh, but it all depends on how much you use the vehicle really. It keeps the engine clean, removes any debris from inside. There's also on the sump plug there, on the, the inside of the sump plug there's a magnet and that'll pick up any debris from inside the engine that'll collect over time. It's always a good idea to give that a good clean when you change your when you change your washer. Okay, so the oil we're going to be using today is Motul 300V Le Mans um, engine oil. It's what we use in all our race cars. Um, really special engine oil. Um, certainly up to the job. So it's a 20W60 engine oil. It's a race car engine oil. Um, it's 100% fully synthetic. Um, one of the best on the market. Okay, so I'm going to remove the uh, oil filter. So 
It's important that when you do this, you leave the sump plug out still because it can still drain uh, the oil from inside the filter out of the sump. If you were to put the sump bum back in, you're just going to end up with old engine oil sat in the bottom. That's the oil from out of the oil filter itself. That's the oil filter, it's a paper element. Just remove that. There should be two seals that live inside here. You just have a look inside there to make sure that there's no debris or metal in there. If you start finding anything like that in there, it's a sign that you've got a problem. Uh, this one's reasonably clean to be fair. The oil filter comes with uh, two different seals, depends on which engine variant you've got. The best way to make sure that you've got the correct seal for the vehicle is there's a small paint mark on it. So we get a new seal here, just make sure that this one's got a blue mark on as well. There we go. So now we're using the right seal for the vehicle. Here we've got a lovely Jaguar E-Type that we've just had in for a pre-season check over. It's had an oil and filter and a full grease round. It belongs to a very good friend of mine, Andy Conreen. Andy Conreen's a really good sponsor of ours and we've just entered our 10th season of racing together. So Andy, can you tell us a little bit about your E-Type? Yeah, this is a 1970 Jaguar E-Type 4.2. Um, I've had it around four years, but I bought it restored from a famous Jaguar dealer down in Kent. The car was a heap of rust until uh, a guy called Richard Moore restored it. And uh, he's done a fairly good job. And when I first saw it four years ago, it looked exactly as it did today. I've just polished it, you've serviced it, and we've just kept on top of it, really. So Andy, famously, Enzo Ferrari himself said these were one of the prettiest cars that were ever brought out. Was this a childhood dream? Well, yeah, it was really. The real dream started when I was 14 when uh, my brother bought a, a, a mate from school home that had to have an E-Type and um, there was him and his father were restoring the car and I got involved with that but going before then, when I was about five or six um, we used to go into Manchester every two weeks shopping with mum on the bus and uh, we used to live in a place called Blakely I mean Blakely Village, its famous son there was George Best oh, he'd right, been yeah. in a boarding house while he was playing at Man United and one day in the pouring rain we saw this guy with the beard and the stubbly sort of skin he came out of his house and he got into a yellow primrose jag wow. and I said to him, what, what's that? He said, it's George Best, I know the car <laughs> <laughs> so, Good story! Uh, so, so that's where it started One of the features I really like on fixed head coupes are these real tailgates that open in a peculiar fashion and I'm just going to show you So the million dollar question, what's it like to own? Yeah, it's an easy car to own. Obviously you've got to watch where you park it. Um, but it's a great car to pull outside the pub with. You always get a crowd of people asking you questions and you get some jokers obviously. Um, it's on loads of various websites where people have said, can I take a picture with it? Loads of dating websites that appears apparently. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a great interesting car to have. Some of the things that make these E-types really special are the attention to details. Look at these lovely bonnet pulls here. Just a chrome bar with a hook on it, one on either side to release the bonnet. You look at the chrome handbrake, the chrome gear lever, the win window winders, the, the door opening. Just fantastically engineered. Very much in the mould of Ferraris of the period. So the final thing we're going to show you on this elegant car is under the bonnet. So me and Andy are now going to show you how we open the bonnet on one of these. Now I'm going to show you a work of art. So very similar to Ferraris, the heart of these cars is the engine. This is a 4.2 straight six engine. So on the far side of the engine, what powers this lovely car are these three inch triple SU carburettors. 
just beautifully engineered under the bonnet all lovely subframe all painted in body color and it's not just how these look under here it's how they sound when they're running and you're going to hear that when andy leaves in a moment well i hope you've enjoyed this week's episode especially this lotus elan hit the subscribe button please leave a comment and let us know what you'd like us to feature and maybe we'll feature a car like this in a future episode.